Let's look further at this golden eye bungee jump. And so if you haven't seen part one, see bond bungee uh, dash one. But in the second part, again, we're assuming the mass is still 100 kilograms for bond and the length of the bungee is 55 meters. And we want to figure out what is his maximum velocity and we're ignoring air resistance. And again, you can watch the clip of the bungee jump at this URL. And so the first question is, when did Bond have maximum velocity? Was it before the bungee started to stretch, just when it started to stretch, or after it stretched some? And so come up with your answer, pause this, and think about it. Here's the answer. It's C, after the bungee started to stretch. And a lot of people think it's going to be B, and it is not B. And the reason is there's still gravity pulling down on him. And so he won't start to slow down until the bungee pulls up with a force that's greater than gravity. And so the maximum velocity occurs when the upward pull of the bungee is equal to the downward pull of gravity, Bond's weight. And so that would be when the acceleration is zero. And that's a tough idea. Free body diagram of Bond. Here's the bungee pulling up. And again, we're assuming a Hooke's Law sort of bungee, a linear bungee. And then weight. And we make up positive, but it doesn't really matter because the acceleration is zero. So some of the forces have to add up to zero. We have a positive Kx, negative weight. And so solving for x, I found that the bungee has stretched 61.25 meters. And so maximum velocity occurs when the bungee is stretched quite a bit, uh, almost halfway. And so if you thought it was B, notice how far off you are. Think seriously about what we're doing here and why this is so. And so now we can take this result and determine how fast he's going when the bungee is stretched 61 and a quarter meters. And we do that with conservation of energy. And so the initial energy equals the final energy. The initial is all potential. The final, at least at this point we're interested in, there's kinetic. And since the bungee is stretched some, there's elastic potential. And so the gravitational potential is MGH, where we measure the height to this point. And then kinetic is 1 half mv squared, and elastic potential for a linear bungee, 1 half kx squared. And so uh, MGH is the mass times 9.8 newtons per kilogram. And then height is the length of the bungee plus the additional distance it's stretched. And so that's a key result there. And then our only unknown then is the velocity. Uh, X in the lasting potential energy is how far it's stretched. And you solve for V and you get 41 meters per second. Again, ignoring air resistance. And so that's over 80 miles per hour. That would be a fun thing to try. Let's take a look at another aspect. Uh, but remember from this one, Bond does not start to slow down until the bungee pulls up more than gravity pulls down. That is the key idea here. How about this? How did Q figure out uh, how to make the bungee? And so the question might be, how did he figure out to make X as long as it was? And so here's the total bungee jump, 220 meters. Again, K is 16 newtons per meter, and the mass of bond, 100 kilograms. And so with this, we'd use conservation of energy. The initial energy equals the final. Uh, initial is all gravitational potential. And again, we'd set height equal to zero at the lowest part, the part we're interested. And the final is elastic potential. Looks very similar to what we did in bungee jump part one. But the issue is, what do I put in for the height? And so here's the initial situation, Bond jumping. Here is the final. And so he's down here at the bottom. And so the change in height is not just the length of the bungee. It is the entire change in height here, L plus X. And so when I put that in for the height, I get a quadratic. And so these sorts of problems are tough. Uh, students often forget that x is here as well as over here. And so mgh is mgl plus x. 
and we put in 100 kilograms for the mass, 9.8 newtons per kilogram for G. The length we know is 55, X is an unknown, and so when you carry out that multiplication, you're going to get a quadratic. And so I got 8x squared minus 980x minus 53,900 equals 0. And solving for x, we get 164 meters. And if you go back to part 1, uh, we saw we had 165. So that's close enough for uh, physics. And so this part is similar to what you do in the bungee jump lab. So uh, make sure you study it carefully. And so more potential energy goes into elastic potential energy as the bungee stretches further and bond falls further. So while the bungee's stretching, he's still losing gravitational potential and it ends up as elastic potential.